All right. So you, this group here, we learned about factors and products. So if you're sitting here, you might already know sort of what we're doing, but it's going to be a little bit different. So the first thing I want you to do is in your journal, in good sentences, I want you to write down what you think a product is and what you think a factor is. And then write down an example. And I'll give you about a minute to do that. Yep, so if you already did a Freer model, you might already know what they are, with examples and non-examples. No, for this I just want examples and Someone explain to me what a factor is. You like? Oh, you do? Okay, Cal. A factor is the number between the multiplication sign. Okay, so mm -hmm. numbers. In a, multi in a multiplication pattern. Okay. Does it have to be multiplication? This is a question for everybody, not just Cal. No, so. If it doesn't have to be multiplication when we're doing addition, so I'm just going to write an addition problem. What are the factors? Are you sure? Let's go to product then. Before we go, before we do examples of multiplication, let's do what is product? Do the definition? Yeah. A product is the answer <coughs> of multiple multiplication. Okay, so the answer. Multiplication problem. Is this a, in this situation? Does a factor have to be multiplication? Is that the answer in addition? Let's say. Okay. So the product has to be with multiplication. Is that what you're saying, or it doesn't have to? Be? It, has. it has to be with multiplication. Does everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. So in a problem, I'm just going to write a problem. Two times two equals four. What would be the product? Four. Four. Okay. So the answer. So you're gonna, you would always put a P underneath that. For the next three days, I just want you to get used to knowing the factors in the products. So if this one only has to do with multiplication, so factor or product is only multiplication, why wouldn't factor be only multiplication? <sighs> Are they always factors though? No. Let's look. Let's look at our product again. Product is only multiplication. What's the answer in an addition in an addition problem? Sum a sum. A sum. Okay. What's our answer in a subtraction problem? It's a difference. A difference. What's our answer in a some of you might have heard it when I was talking, but what's our answer in a division problem? If not, that's fine. Start with a Q. Quotient. Quotient. Close, it's a quotient. Okay. So if all of these are different, all the answers are different, depending on the problem, why would the, the way to get there, why would those have to be, why would those all be the same? Don't you think that all have different numbers or different names, I should say? Like in division, you have divisors. It's not factors. Does that make sense? So your factor is specific to multiplication. That's why I really like that definition. Okay? So both of these, if you're working on your product and your factor, prayers, make sure you include multiplication in their answers, in their definitions. Does that make sense to everyone? 
they are very specific definition or to multiplication. So then my next question is going to be, looking at factors and products, can there be more than one factor, or more than two factors in a math problem? Yes. Okay, give me an example. Uh, 36. 30. Divide by 2 times. Factor or product have anything to do with division? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, we'll just go 2 times 2 times 2, what does that equal? 8. 2 times 2 is? 4. Times 2 is? 4. Just kidding, 8. 8, okay. So, looking at this, what are our factors? The 2's? Okay, so what are we gonna put? What do you think we're gonna put under the two? If we're putting a p under the product. That's F. 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 Okay, so just for the next three days, anytime there's a problem that I'm having you physically write down, I'd like you to put an F underneath, so you know where the factors are. You can think about it in your head. So what do you think we should write underneath the A's? P. P. That's the Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to give you a couple word problems, and I want you to write down the word problems. So not word for word, but you're going to make it into a number sentence. So for example, it's going to look something like this. Two numbers, two factors, and a product. I'm going to, there are three questions, and I'll we'll have you come up to the board, and I want you to write your F's and P's underneath. Okay? So the questions, they're small, so I'm going to read them out loud. I'll read them more than once. First question is each child has 50 candles. Well, candies, just kidding. 50 candies. If there are six children, how many candies are there in total? This is work to be done in your notebook. So each kid has 50 candies. If there are six children, how many pieces of candy are there total? I'm going to read you all three and then we'll do them. The second question each candy costs $80. How much do three candies cost? So each candy costs $80. How much candy is that? How much does three pieces cost? And the last one, each orange costs $4. How much do 80 oranges cost? Okay, if you need any of them repeated, let me know. Which one? Each orange costs $4. How much do 80 oranges cost? about a minute to do that. What's the second question again? The second question was, each candy costs $80. How much do three candies cost? six children, how many candies would there be? And you're going to write that this way. Julian, go ahead. Remember your F's and P's. Six and your numbers are 50 and 6. Thumb up if you disagree, thumb down if you're not sure, thumb in the middle. Let's see, thumb from everyone. Okay. Uh, we would like to do number two. You're going to do that right here. Number two is each candy costs $80. How much do three candies cost? Hold on, my ladies, for a second. Can 
candy costs eighty dollars. How much do three candies cost? And your F's and P's. And if you would read them up, if you just read them down, if you are not sure, put them in the middle. Third one, we're going to go kind of down below that one. Um, so the question was, and there will be more questions, don't worry. Each orange costs $4. How much do each orange cost? Okay, and then the last one. She buys 40 bottle caps each time. How many bottle caps did Jennifer buy total last month? So she went to the store five times. Every time she went, she bought 40 bottle caps. How many does she end up with? Jennifer goes to the store. She goes five times to the store. Every time she goes to the store, she buys 40 bottle caps. How many does she have? Jennifer goes to the store five times last month and she buys 40 bottle caps. Two numbers out of five. Five and four. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Station. Brady, can you hit the button? 